Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this is a special presentation. I'm going to have a conversation with uh, the two chief technical analysts that I work with in the markets. They're uh, working with the trading platform that we use with MMG Capital Management and Trust Company. And uh, this is a special opportunity that we have to uh, get some insights from folks that are uh, really watching the markets uh, on a daily basis, doing technical analysis, monitoring the trends, the tendencies, the opportunities, um, identifying those opportunities. And so um, we'll be talking about the soft commodities and why that's, why that's important these days um, in the days of inflation and how the old world of finance is really being turned on its ear. And so this is going to give you some insights as to uh, how we can use the markets to, to level the playing field, you know, when so many people are being wrecked in the markets. So I'd like to introduce uh, Jason and uh, Gabriella. Welcome, folks. I'm really glad you could join me today. Uh, Jason, how are you doing? I'm good, Mark. Thank you very much for asking. And hello to the dear audience. Uh, it's, uh, my name is Jason. One more time, I am a senior account manager with 14 years of experience as a trader and as an account manager combined. We've been working with Mark uh, for quite some time. And uh, I would like today to use this occasion to uh, present you a different perspective. Uh, as Mark already mentioned, uh, soft commodities uh, is the uh, main focus, and the other focus that we will have today is Bitcoin, but uh, just a different different angle from what uh, people are, are used to and uh, how people are used to invest in Bitcoin. Good. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's the thing we, will, we would like to address today, and uh, I would start with uh, with uh, the presentation that we've prepared uh, with some slides on Bitcoin. And afterwards, uh, Gabby will take it from there so she can, uh, we, yeah, she can elaborate a little bit more on soft commodities and why they are really, really important nowadays. Okay, well, let me just say hello and welcome to uh, Gabby, Gabriella. Hello as well, welcome to everyone. We're so happy that we're finally having the chance to present to everyone these amazing opportunities. And we're finally having the chance to meet with everyone. Uh, as you understood, me and Jason, we're working under the team of Mr. Boswell and we're helping him for quite some time. Uh, me, just like Jason, I'm having 14 years of experience on the market and we have been used to working with a variety of different clients. So we are happy that we'll get the chance now in those rough times to present you something that can practically help you, educate you, and of course, make you additional profits. That's the idea, huh? Well, thank you yes. so much. Yeah, it's thank a real pleasure so to have both of you together here and uh, be able to go over these things. So uh, if you don't mind, uh, why don't we begin uh, sharing yep. some of the information you have for us? All right. Well, uh, as we discussed, uh, we will uh, today we will be talking about a well-known topic in the invest uh, well-known topic in the investors' world, uh, more precisely Bitcoin. However, we won't be discussing the well-known general facts and other theories that majority of crypto investors are aware of. Uh, today, we would like uh, rather to clarify to you uh, a not so broadly known method of investing in Bitcoin. Uh, which is happening through a Forex trading account. Now, we all know that Bitcoin is a digital currency which uh, operates free of any central control or the oversight of banks and governments. This basically means that it's untraceable. For now, Bitcoin is under the radar of all financial institutions. Most importantly, it is under the radar of all tax institutions. However, everything around the mother of all cryptos is extremely dynamic and it can be changed literally in hours. Therefore, investors need to be very, very flexible and they must be willing to adopt uh, to 
the ever-changing trading environment, not only so they can stay up to date, but also to secure their holdings and reduce the risk for them as much as possible. Um, there are few ways in which a person can invest and hold crypto. Now, buying it through an e-wallet is the first and uh, most known one. Uh, Binance, Coinbase, Electrum, I'm pretty sure that uh, this rings a lot of bells for uh, a lot of uh, the people that are going to watch this video. And uh, of course, the other, um, uh, the other means is uh, to hold a crypto uh, simply in a hard drive, a flash device or something like that. Now, these are well established and logically, majority of people prefer it as it's simple and they understand the model of it. Um, unfortunately, nowadays, the most popular means of holding crypto becomes more and more uh, exposed to many different risks, and some of which are listed here in, in this slide on the left side of it. Um, now, the pending regulations, uh, which is the biggest government in the world are publishing constantly for, pushing, sorry, constantly for, uh, may end up uh, to the point where you can get questioned and forced to provide documentation about your crypto belongings. This can be an exhausting process, you know, from your side as a, as a crypto holder, as you may need to show to the government a lot of sensitive information that you may not be so willing to disclose in the first place. God forbids if you, fall, uh, you fail to provide the necessary requ uh, requested by you documents, everything that you hold may get seized. This is an, an, an actual concern that a lot, a lot of people are, are actually having. Nowadays, and that's if you have it in a uh, an exchange, right? Yes, in a wallet, in an exchange wallet. Yes. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh, I am I am emphasizing on the on the biggest disadvantage that that we we see and that are capable of really coming into action in the in the upcoming years. Uh, so, of course, we are trying to be proactive and to, to tackle things before actually they happen and, and, and affects us. Yeah, and that's so, important. If I, if I could just add, Jason, that um, people like us who value our privacy um, and expediency of doing transactions have really enjoyed using Bitcoin as opposed to working through the banking system. In fact, I've told the story to, to a number of people that uh, when I was first trying to fund, fund our account with, uh, with you guys, that it, 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 I tried to do a wire transfer. It took me over a month. And because of just some unknowns that the banks had, uh, they closed my account. So long story short, it took, I wasted a month's worth of time trying to do a bank wire transfer. I ended up losing one of my bank accounts and I asked Jason, well, Jason, do you do you accept Bitcoin? Can I just fund the account with Bitcoin? He goes, well, yeah. And I'm like, oh, sheesh, man. I wish I had that a month ago. I've gone through hell, you know? So, so just being able to deal with Bitcoin was just a pure relief for me. Anyway, I wanted to just get that out. Well, uh, the... The other hot topic of discussion between EU and US is the tax implementation on crypto profits, which is more concerning. Uh, know that we talk about profits here, not, the, not, not investments. Uh, so there is a difference. Uh, in other words, they are trying to open a door where they can tax the profit that you have made once you decide to convert it in actual currency, whether this will be uh, US dollar or Euro or British pound or whatever else. Now, the frame of the tax last posted was 5 to 30%. In other words, on every $100,000 profit that you may make from trading with crypto or Bitcoin or Ethereum, whatever it, that may be, you will need to pay taxes of anything between 5,000 and 30,000 US dollars which will be a really, really unpleasant experience in the end of the day for everyone that, that are actually investing with, uh, with cryptocurrencies. So uh, this is where we are heading. And I, I don't know uh, whether it's how much time it will take, but um, I am pretty positive that governments, 
somehow will find a way to uh, to tax this. So yeah, if I could interrupt again, that's it's you know the, the reason one of the reasons Bitcoin has been so popular is because it's kind of the old wild west, you know. Uh, it's been unregulated. It's going directly against the control that the banksters have. And uh, people just have a complete sense of freedom about that. Well, you know, that is going to be a limited opportunity because, you know, those that are in control of governments and banking and uh, regulatory uh, regulations, um, they're going to be pushing hard to find ways to regulate Bitcoin and because, uh, because it's a direct threat to their system, right? So, yeah, it is. So, yeah, Jason, the point you're getting at is that we're headed in a direction of, of regulation and reporting and transparency and taxation right back into the situation that we're all trying to get out of. Right. So. Exactly. So uh, this is why we are emphasizing on, on, on timing and with you as well. Always we've been talking about timing because it's really, really essential when it comes to uh, to seize the moment, so to say. Uh, now is the time where we're still we don't have such things. We do not have taxes. We do not have uh, IRS. We do not have uh, governments pursuing us for uh, uh, source of funds and things like this to pro to prove why, when, and from where we have made such investments, you know, into crypto. So it it is really the time where you can take most most advantage of uh, of trading with uh, with cryptocurrencies and make as much as possible. Combining this, you know, securing yourself in in such times where. The global inflation, it's this year, it's estimated to hit over 35%. So that's that's the other topic that we will be touching today with uh, with Gabby. But uh, to to wrap it up in, in in what we what we wanted to say about uh, the disadvantages and the potential risks that we have, especially in the in the old means of investments in uh, in cryptocurrencies, are there on the left side. Now. The second option for holding Bitcoin is through a trading account with a trusted broker. Okay, on the on the right hand side you can see advantages of that, and on a later point, right, you can you can go through the through through them as well on your own. But uh, I will be again uh, emphasize on the fact that you have the ability to speculate with the price of uh, of, of Bitcoin when you're doing it in a trading account, meaning that you can benefit from the movement up in the price, as well as you can benefit from the movement down in the price. We will be discussing this on a, on a later point, but this is one of the main, main advantages that you have. The other one is the so-called leverage, which uh, I will be uh, clearing in the, next, uh, in the next slides. But um, with a hand on my heart, I can say personally for me, this is the most, most flexible and convenient way uh, a certain investor to have the liquidity of his capital in all possible ways he may need it in, you know, in future. Because Mark can confirm that you have always, at, you have access to the, to the capital that, uh, that it's invested and uh, liquidity is always there and you can, you can be flexible in terms of, uh, of saving it or preserving it in, in many different sub accounts, many, many different ways that, uh, that, uh, that you can do it and that you can avoid risk in, in general uh, from the collapse of price uh, of, of cryptocurrencies, because this is the biggest jeopardy nowadays. Yeah. If I could just add to your last point about being able to profit in downtrends as well as uptrends. Um, that's huge because, you know, a lot of folks will say, whoa, I don't know about Bitcoin. I mean, it's off more than 42 percent off of its high, you know, last November. Uh, and it appears to be in a bearish trend. Well, that would be a distinct disadvantage if you're simply uh, hodling and just just buying and holding. Right. Because your value is diminishing in the bear market. But um, uh, in a trading account, when you can uh, go short you can profit on that downward trend. And so that's, that's really the key that um, uh, Jason and Gabby do 
and providing value is identifying what these trends are and uh, making recommendations. So uh, making profits in either direction is a huge advantage. So back to you, Jason. Yes. Now, let's start from, from the understanding of what leverage is, because a lot of people are, are missing this point here. The leverage that a broker provides to a certain investor or a certain individual, uh, it simply is a multiplier of the investment made in the trading account. In the case of cryptocurrencies, the leverage is one to five. This simply means that it is five times cheaper to trade with Bitcoin in your trading account than buying Bitcoin through an e-wallet, right? Maybe you can, you can understand it from the picture here, but if you have, figuratively speaking, 5 million, okay, that you can invest in Bitcoin through a trading account, the leverage gives you five times bigger trading power. So the, the buying power that you have on the Forex market in a trading account is, is going to be five times bigger, or in other words, 25 million that you will be able to operate with. Okay. Now, if I will give an example, so so the audience can can actually understand the the concept of leverage. Um, if we assume that the person would want to invest in five bitcoins, okay, to buy it with a crypto wallet, you you would need a hundred and fifty thousand dollars to invest in five. Bitcoins as the current price is $30,000 per unit as we speak. Right now it's fluctuating, of course, you know, 29, 28 to 30,000. But just for this example, and to be, uh, to be clear to everyone, uh, we assume that the given price is $30,000 per unit. Right. So in other words, if you, if you would like to invest in five units, five Bitcoins, you need to pull up 150,000 US dollars, five times 30,000 the, the price. With the leverage of one to five, this is of course, when we talk about, about the e-wallet. Now, if you're doing it through a trading account with the leverage of one to five, you will need five times less money to invest in the same quantity of Bitcoin, right? And if you take the mathematic, it's going to be 30,000, which is the price of Bitcoin per unit times quantity of Bitcoin that you would like to purchase, which is five, divided by the leverage, which is five. And this equals 6,000. That will be per unit. So 6,000 will be the required capital per unit to, you know, to invest. And if you multiply 6,000 by five, you're getting $30,000. Is that clear, Mark? Yeah, I think it's important to understand that with that 6,000, you're not buying Bitcoin, okay? Yeah. Actually, you're actually committing margin on your trading account to take a position on Bitcoin so that you can profit on the movement, okay? Correct. So, yeah. So, so you're using, instead of buying Bitcoin and putting it in your wallet, you're, you're buying a position on Bitcoin in that amount at that price so that you can uh, you can uh, hopefully benefit from the price movements uh, coming forward. So just to make that distinction, that's an important distinction. Yes, it's called required margin as, 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 you, uh, as you're saying, and that will be the amount that you would need to commit into this particular position in this particular trade. But if we have the example and, and, and compare it with an e-wallet, uh, to a trading account, the first first advantage that uh, uh, that you have is the leverage of one to five. As as we said again, it's five times cheaper. So in an e-wallet, you need one hundred and fifty thousand to invest in five BTC. In a in a trading account, you need only thirty thousand. That's number one. Number two, in terms of profit, right? Because everyone are interested. All right, I will, it will be five times cheaper for me. But what will be the profit? Is there any commission? What is going to happen with, uh, with the trade afterwards? Well, number one, there is no commission, all right? And what you're making and what you're gaining as a, as a movement, it's a pure return that goes entirely for you. This is number one. 
Number two, you are waiting for the same result, okay? If we assume that the price right now is 30,000 and you would like to purchase five BTCs, you will have to invest 150,000 in the e-wallet. And if we assume that you are waiting, you're buying this five Bitcoins with the anticipation that the price will reach a new all time high of 80,000, you would hold that and you will just wait for this to happen, right? That's, that's the, the general idea of, of investing in, in, in BTC. Now, the same thing will happen in a trading account, but you're going to take $30,000 to buy the same quantity and expect the same result. As you buy five units of Bitcoin at the price of 30,000 and the price reaches 80,000, the difference between these two prices times the quantity of your trade gives you your return, okay? So the result that you're anticipating is the same, but in one, uh, one of the options, you're, you're investing 150K for a result of 250,000 as a profit. In the other case, you have an investment of 30,000 that aims exactly for the same thing, $250,000 of a profit. Which one is better and cheaper in your opinion? I think that this is a rhetorical question. Yeah. Yeah, so the return increases uh, exponentially because your capital committed is much less. Mm -hmm. So, the, so right. the, the dollar amount of the gain is the same, but the percentage return is much greater. Yeah, you can, you can say it that way. Yeah. Yes. The other option, of course, is to, uh, is to use the leverage into, into buying power right? And you have that option to invest into a bigger quantity even with a less amount, okay? But this, again, this is, this is something that happens with, 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 our, uh, with our expert calculation and with our suggestions when this is possible, whether it is possible uh, given to the market conditions, should you do it, what are the advantages, what are the disadvantages? All this is Consult it with us, and then you can execute the, the trade that you would like to execute or that we suggest. Okay, good. Uh, that's, that's pretty much it. The thing that I wanted to talk about uh, with, uh, with Bitcoin, um, because really the advantages are huge, but they, in order to be shown in practice, a person really needs to to have uh, to have a commitment and have a trading account so it can it can be it can be shown how it really works. As you you remember how you started, you remember how how it began for you. Yeah, well, I started you know with a small account, got comfortable, and uh, gradually added to the account. And uh, oh, how long have we been doing this now? A couple of years at least. Yeah. And uh, two two years and some months. Yeah, so very happy so far. Obviously, market is up and down, and and uh, you know that's why it's important to have people like Jason and Gabriella to uh, to work with, so that they can help guide you through, you know, the ups and the downs of the market, and uh, that's a huge plus. Well, uh, our target for the investments in general. Uh, is to be to be done through Bitcoin, and of course, uh, one portion of this uh, this investment to be in Bitcoin, at least the same the same amount that uh, that the person committed uh, to be to be open as a trade in Bitcoin. What I mean by this is like if a person is going to take uh, five or ten BTCs to contribute to a trading account, he would he would not want to lose the value of this right of this holding. So our first uh, first advantage that we have uh, by using the leverage will be that once the, tr the transfer comes of 10 Bitcoins, for example, I'm just giving, it will reflect into US dollars or into Euro or into British pounds, so whatever the, uh, the individual may want uh, to have uh, his account denominated in. But um, if, 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 we take, if we take this example, with, um, uh, uh, with one Bitcoin, let's say, of an investment, this would mean $30,000 into the account as a balance, right? If we take 
10 bitcoins, this would mean $300,000 into the balance that the person will, will be using and it will be effectively trading with. Now, uh, as, the, as we wouldn't like to have uh, the loss of the value of these 10 Bitcoins, immediately what we will do is that we will open the same position in the equivalent of, of the trade that the person uh, invested in. So if you have $300,000 into the trading account, immediately what we will do is that we will buy 10 BTCs and we will be waiting for the same thing that the person was going to wait for, holding these 10 BTCs in an e-wallet. Does it make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And you, don't, and you don't want to commit all your margin in one position. Exactly. So we this is this is where the leverage comes because you won't, right? You won't commit the uh, the same amount of money as you have to divide it by five. So when it comes to when it comes to open the same trade of five bitcoins. Okay, uh, sorry, 10, let's say you, you're, the person is transferring 10 BTC where the balance becomes 300,000. To open 10 BTC at $30,000 of a price, it's 300,000 as we discussed. This is what will enter in the balance as an investment. And when you want to open the trade, this gets divided by five, which is the leverage. So only 60,000 out of the 300,000 is going to be committed into this particular position. 10 Bitcoins. So the person is not losing any value. It's not losing anything out of the, out of the investment and out of the shift that he's doing, all right? Moving money from an e-wallet to a trading account. In the moment when you move 10 Bitcoins into a trading account, you open the same position as 10 Bitcoins and you wait for the same result where the price is going up. But you're committing only $60,000 out of the 300,000 dollars value that your 10 bitcoins has and then the rest right you can use in different spheres you can use into commodities you can use into investments in stocks you can use into investment in um uh in currency pairs or anything else that you may want yeah that's the concept and this is where gabby will come because the target for the, for the investments that people were making with us is to have an extra layer of security, which comes from applying our risk management model and diversity strategy of, of the trading account. So in, besides Bitcoin, people may invest in many different things. And this is the next topic that uh, Gabby will cover in what right now people can take most advantage of. Exactly. Good. All right, thank you. Okay.